that we have the victory and come what may God's got our back the devil can try but he's not gonna get us amen, amen. today we have the victory amen victor's crown Grace, I live and breathe to worship. 
worship you at the mention of your greatness in your name I will bow down in your presence fear is silent for you wear the victor's crown let your glory fill this temple let your power
come on, celebrate Jesus one more time. Can I get you up standing? With a standing ovation, a shout. Come on, welcome his eminence. Hello? Hallelujah. That was low energy praise. Give me high energy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, um, 37 years ago, when I went to La Côte d'Ivoire, to establish a work there. It was the Catholic Church and the Assemblies of God that were on the ground. And certain individuals told me that this whole idea of bringing the charismatic church or movement to La Côte d'Ivoire is not going to work because the Catholic Church are very strong there, and it was. And I just kept going, I kept going, I kept going, I kept going for 36 years. Today in La Côte d'Ivoire, unbelievably, there are mega, mega, mega charismatic churches all over La Côte d'Ivoire. And, and recently, I went to dedicate one of the auditoriums, very, very huge to a 10,000-seat auditorium of one of my sons, Bishop Alasa Watara. And before I went, a friend of mine from the U.S. called me and said that I should really go because Alasa was his son. Then when I arrived at the airport, I was met by all these men and women of God, and some of them introduced themselves to me, and then Bishop said, Papa, this is my spiritual father, this is my spiritual uncle. So when I went to the church and I was to preach, I realized that nobody was claiming the wife. All the competition was over him. So I decided, uh, like President Kennedy said, that success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. So I said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be here and to celebrate what is going on here. But first of all, I want to thank God for my daughter and for my son-in-law. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so when I came in, I said to Osofu, I said, where is my daughter? And he said, she's in auditorium. And I said, I have to see her because if I don't see her, I'm going back home. <laughs> oh, you're not clapping. So I wasn't moving till I saw mommy. Then when I saw her, I said, my anointing has come. So ladies and gentlemen, this morning I'm here thanking God for everything. I want to celebrate my daughter and my son-in-law. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is no fight over this one. Amen. There's no contention over this one. Amen. But uh, before you are seated, I'm so honored and uh, privileged to be here and to see in my lifetime uh, things that we prayed and believed God for is happening in our time. And when, when you look at what is happening here, I was telling mommy, I said, you know, what is happening here is a prophetic statement that there is hope for the future of this nation. Because I've known Osafo since he was in school and to see what God has done I knew his dad. The fact that the fact that the father was not a bishop, an archbishop, a prophet, 
or a man of God and to produce such a son and a gift from God to do what you are seeing here is a listen this is a prophetic indication that the future of this nation and the youth is bright I'm telling you. because when I was building action 30 years ago I wasn't into all the details you have here we were scattered we had moved to about nine places in the city we had nowhere to go we were wandering all we wanted was a refuge and a place to place our head to be secured so we weren't into all the details that you see here we just wanted to be settled we've been in the wilderness for many 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 years and we just wanted to settle so all we were interested in was just give us a place to settle down we didn't even think about children's Sunday school, youth church, nothing. We just wanted an auditorium. That was them. But this generation, they have time to think through everything. Are you hearing me? They have time to think through every detail. Aren't you excited that you were born in this season? Amen. Uh, I was sharing with mommy when we were at the back in the office and I said, you know, the Bible said that I would turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the heart of the sons to the fathers. Now, this is that generation. And it's very important for this generation to appreciate and understand what Malachi 4, 5 means. Because if you don't get it, you could miss your moment in the time of destiny. You know, the other day in the 40s, Prime Minister Winston Churchill said something. He said, in the life of every man, there come a time when destiny taps you on the shoulders to perform a duty for which you came into this world. And for which everything that is required to fulfill that duty was already embedded in you. And he said, what a tragedy will it be when that moment comes, which could have been the finest moment in your life to find you unprepared because you lack the understanding of the moment. I pray that not one hearing the sound of my voice will miss the reason for your being. Say amen. amen. And I was telling mommy at the back, I said, I said, when the angel came and spoke to Mary, the angel said, to Mary that I'm giving you a sign because of what is about to happen to you when you get pregnant your cousin Elizabeth as old as she is known as barren is six months pregnant you are not yet pregnant so she's ahead of your pregnancy she's ahead of you and, and he said, when you get pregnant, go nowhere but to Elizabeth, the old generation. Because she's more pregnant than you. Even though what you are carrying is bigger than what she's carrying, she's more pregnant than you. So go to her. Because she will give you some keys. She will teach you something you need to know to understand what you are carrying. You need to go on ahead. This generation must understand the rules of engagement. That there is something about honoring those who are more pregnant than you. And hear me. The reason why this generation must honor those that are more pregnant than you is this. And hear me clearly. What Mary was carrying in her womb had need of what the old generation Elizabeth was carrying. The old generation was carrying something. The name of what she was carrying was a treasure. The name of what she was carrying was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was to come ahead of what Mary was carrying. To make a way for what Mary the young generation was carrying. Somebody say talk to me. Hear me. It was 
mandatory and critical for Mary to connect with the old generation Elizabeth. Because Elizabeth was carrying in her womb the man that will prepare the way for what Mary was carrying. And Mary was carrying the man that will bring all of us to salvation. But John the Baptist was needed and it was the old generation that had to produce the bulldozer to clear the way for the new generation to come. Somebody say, talk to me. When Samson at the end of his life had lost his vision, his sight, and there was a young lad who had vision because the Bible says the old man shall dream dreams and the young man shall see vision. And, and vision is foresight and dream is insight. So the young generation may have foresight but they lack insight into the foresight. And to have insight into your foresight, you need the old man's dream. And if you want your vision to be fulfilled, then you must help the old man to fulfill his dream. Because the fulfillment of the vision of the young generation is in the fulfillment of the old man's dream. These are principles, if we don't understand them, we wander in the wilderness. Because the journey from Egypt to Canaan was a journey of 11, year, 11 days and it became a journey of 40 years. Because they had, there was a generation that lacked understanding of the ways of God except Moses. They were into the wonders, the miracle, and the acts of God. But they lacked understanding of the ways of God. And he prolonged their journey for 40 years. I pray that your journey will not be prolonged. Yeah. Somebody say, I hear you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, Sir for Michael, congratulations for allowing yourself to be used by God. And... I was here, I was here when the first auditorium was built and I came to pray over the foundation for the rising up of a new one and I'm here to see it to the glory of God. And I pray to see many, many, many more such auditoriums all across Ghana, all across Ghana. There's a young preacher here one of my sons, he used to pray in my house many years ago. Your pastor knows him very well. He's building an auditorium, three stories. It's amazing, you know? And I went there the other time to plant a tree before they broke the ground to start the building. So I planted a tree on this side and then we went to the other side and he also planted a tree the same tree and watered my tree and watered his tree he sent me a picture a few months ago and he said papa there's something strange going on here your tree has grown and it's so tall and my tree is still where it was same tree planted the same day and nothing is happening to his tree and my tree is growing and I said son there is a difference between authority and power and I said you have power but you haven't access authority yet I said that is the difference and, and today I want to, I know you've had many great voices in the land that has come to impact your life and this church. And let's put our hands together for all of them that has come. Every one of them. Celebrate every one of them. We are very blessed as a nation to have all the voices that have come in here. 
And we thank God for every one of them, and I'm so proud of every one of them. Amen. Please lift up your hands. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. different works of life we've come everyone with an expectation and a need different from another and in the name of Jesus we have thousands online hungry 
having an expectation to be touched, to be fed, to be impacted. And so, Heavenly Father, let weights be lifted. Let yokes be broken. Let shackles be destroyed. Let the prison gates be open. Let prisoners go home. In the name of Jesus, let the bound be loose. Let the sick be healed. Let the lost be found. Let your name be glorified. Let your word have a free course. We annul every contamination, interference, manipulations, spells and projections in the atmosphere, in the environment, in the name of Jesus and declare, oh my enemy, make no mistake. For I will not be sabotaged and we will not be hindered and we will not be limited by the power of Jesus' name. Make no mistake, we superimpose the victories of the blood of the Lamb over the oracles of the enemy intercept every manipulation, projection, interference and every power of the sorceress and diviners, enchantment, divination, incantations in the name of Jesus and warlocks. We superimpose the power of Jesus' name over all such and declare, let God arise. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered and now let the gates of the fountains of the deep within break forth let in the name of jesus Sadahaya, please be seated in heavenly places you know this is very interesting i remember a few weeks ago if you go online you'll see the same thing i was telling pastor uh, when i was in la Côte d'Ivoire to dedicate bishop wataris uh, building as soon as I began praying the generator and the light went off yeah everything went off the generator the light and for over 30 minutes it wasn't coming on so I just decided you know something I'm going to preach without power and light so I started preaching and when I started preaching after a while everything came back see I hear you um, I'll tell you something. This thing is not about talk. I'm telling you. It's not about talk. Everybody can talk. And I'll tell you something. If the enemy, if the enemy is not interested in what you are carrying, you are not a threat. And you are not a force to reckon with. If the enemy doesn't mind you, mm, if he doesn't mind you and it's not in your business, it's a clear indicator that you are not going anywhere. But the enemy is very nervous about those who carry something. Are you hearing me? Very, very interesting. You know, a few weeks ago, I didn't tell my daughter I would do this, but as she was singing, I just thank God that we are celebrating and not grieving. Because a few weeks ago, I was in Italy uh, at a mountain place called Fiji. And on the Thursday morning, I woke up and I told my security, where's Ben? I said, Ben, I, I got to cry out. And I can't do it in my hotel room. I'm in an executive suite and connected to other rooms. And I said, I, I need to cry out. There is something over my chest and it's heavy and I need to break through it. It's a cloud. So I said, let's go for a walk. And he said, well, I said, let's go somewhere. Let's walk out among the trees, the bush. Let's go out. So we left the place. We went among, uh, around the bush. And I just began to fire, to fire, to fire. And the thing won't lift. It was heavy. It was like a rock on my chest. And I wasn't seeing anything. And I wasn't hearing anything. But it was heavy on my chest. And I knew that something was off. And until that thing was lifted, I couldn't relax. I was agitated and very troubled. And so we went down to the valley and we have to climb the steps back to the hill. And when we got to the hill, I felt a little relief, but the heaviness was still there. Then suddenly it dawned on me. I said, give me my phone. I took my phone and I said, something is wrong with Elsie. So I called and I said, girl, are you okay? She said, dad, I'm fine. I'm just not myself. And I said, 
who is taking care of you? And he mentioned a doctor. I said, no, you need something better than this. I said, whatever you are dealing with is bigger than what, who is handling you right now. So I called Tyson. I said, Tyson, get to Elsie's apartment right now. Get all the security van. And I called the doctors. I said, put together your best. And the doctor said, what is it, Papa? I said, I don't know, but something is wrong, so get ready. And I called Ella. I said, Ella, go to Elsie's apartment. Get her in the car. Move her to the hospital right now. So they rushed her to the hospital. By the time she got there, her body was cold and it was turning blue. So they went in immediately. Her kidneys were shot, liver was shot, blood clot was all over, rising to her lungs everywhere. So I called the doctor. I said, Doc, what are we dealing with? He said, Papa, you need to pray. It's 50-50. I said, what do you mean by 50-50? He said, we could save or lose her. It's 50-50 chances medically unless you pray. So I said, okay. Okay, we'll pray. And I, I jumped out. I got on the plane. I won't eat and drink. And I said, get me to Ghana. Whatever it takes, get me to Ghana. She was at the ICU for three weeks. And the nurses and the doctors came together. And they said, she won't make it. The numbers are not good. And I stood by her and spoke into her ears because she couldn't speak. And I said, girl, I promise you, I promise you, you will walk out of this ICU in the name of Jesus and I said your voice will not be silenced and I will not bury any of my children until the day of Jesus Christ and my children will not be fatherless and the doctor said to me the doctor said Papa Papa we least expected what we are seeing the result we are seeing is mind-blowing it's unbelievable and then the doctor said Papa it would take three to six months for her to walk because she couldn't walk. She lost her mobility and everything. She has to sit in a wheelchair. She has to use crutches to learn how to walk again. And I said, she will walk. She will sing again. This voice will not be silenced. And wherever this is coming from, let it boomerang a thousand times. And Today, it could have been something different from what we were hearing. But God, at the point, at the point I said, God, God, mercy. At the point, that is all I prayed. I said, Lord, mercy, mercy. I said, I, I can't be denied of mercy. I'm not doing warfare. I'm not doing anything now. I've done en enough warfare at this venture and at this point. I said, mercy, mercy. I obtained mercy. For divine escape somebody say divine escape divine escape and so I just want to celebrate her life and thank God for her life sit down and I'll go see my grandchildren and I'll tell them I said mommy is coming back they had no idea what was going on and I said mommy is coming back home I promise you she's coming back and I walked to the ICU, and she couldn't talk. And she wrote on a piece of paper, I'm ready to go. And I said, you don't have the right. When they told me she was ready, she wrote, ready to go. I said, ready to go where? You don't have the right to die. You have no right. I revoke your rights. <laughs> By divine authority. I repeal that right to go. You are not going anywhere. Madula Mida Luz. Telei Katukan Divandu Ku Samanda Leitu. Ke Labutu Kahan De Sukutala Gaza. Tell somebody you have no right to go anywhere. You tell somebody, don't even try, don't even try. Tell somebody, make no mistake, make no mistake. You have no right to go anywhere. Sit down and give God praise. Today, I just want to feel free to help somebody because I've been preaching for 46 years this year, and I've seen a lot. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I'm going to attempt to help somebody. I didn't come to talk to everybody. I came to talk to somebody, and I don't know who I came to talk to, but I came for somebody today. 
And by the time I'm through with you, you will break something. Tell somebody, break the cycle, break the cycle. Come on, say, break the cycle. I want to talk to you about breaking the cycle of patterns. And I know that we are all Shadamite and Shadabites. We speak in tongues. Yes, sir. And I know we are the redeemer of the Lord and we are believers and all that is good. But I want you to understand something that when people are saved and born again, you, first of all, you are a baby in the Lord. You got to grow. You got to mature to come to the place of sonship. And there are a lot of babies in the church all over the nations. We have too many babies. And babies and kids and children don't inherit. The Bible said, for as many as believed on him, to him or to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You become a son. Children are born, but sons are developed. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. There's a difference between sonship. There's a difference between a child and a son. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the mature sons of God. Even among sons, they are mature. And the whole creation of God groans awaiting the manifestation, not of the children of God, but the sons of God. It is sons that inherit. Children don't inherit. When I was writing my will the other time, I said to my lawyer, give this and give this and give that to everybody. But to this one, I want it to be held in trust for this one, not now. The rest can have it. And I'm not waiting to go for my children to find out what is in the wheel. I told them, I said, this is what you have, and this is what I have for you, all of you. Anything else, it will go into trust for you. But for now, everything I have is this. This is yours, this is yours, this is yours. This is, take it, build upon it. Don't wait for me to go anywhere because sometimes the desire and the wish of waiting for your parents to go for you to inherit becomes a dead wish. <laughs> and I am not waiting to go anywhere for anybody to get anything. Take it right now that I'm here. <laughs> eh? I'm not going anywhere. Forward there, forward there, the amount. You to build yours. My father didn't give me anything till he died. You know, so I'm not waiting. Don't wait for me to go. You can have it right now. Don't pray any prayers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I've seen a lot. Recently, one of my bishops called me. And I didn't like the sound of his voice. And I said, what is it? And he said, your daughter. And um, I found out that the mother was a believer. And she died by a particular kind of cancer. And they just discovered cancer at the same place her mother had a cancer and died out of it. And I said, we obtained divine exemption. And I said, make no mistake, not this one. You had her, but not this one. By divine immunity, we prohibit any further advancement with this disease. We cast it to the very root and we command the life of it to die and we die. Are you hearing me? I'm just saying some few things for you to understand as we get into the scriptures. Please come with me. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, Paul prayed a prayer that the Lord, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Go ahead. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom yes, sir. and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. So there is a hope with this, with future. You have a future. And your future is bright. And your latter will be better and greater than your past. If you believe it, give me high energy praise, somebody here. That means it doesn't matter what you've been through. And it doesn't matter where you are. 
And it doesn't matter what has happened to you. Your future will be better and greater than where you've come from. If you believe it, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Go ahead. And what the riches of the glory of his saints? The riches. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance? In the saints. In the saints. So there are riches. There are riches in stock for you. The Bible said, eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Neither has entered the hearts of men what God has planned for you. And when the Bible says, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, nor entered the hearts of men, it means that what God has planned to do with you and what is about to happen in your life has never happened before in your family. Yeah. That you are going to be the first in your family Amen. to break the generational curse. You will be the first in your family to obtain certain height and, 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 and greatness that no one in your bloodline has ever obtained before. If you believe it, put your hands down and shout yes. <laughs> Sit down for two minutes. He said, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has entered the hearts of men. It means that God is about to do something that has never happened before. That you are going to be a wonder. You'll be a mystery. People will have to demystify you to understand you. Say yes. That means you are going to be a game changer. A weapon of war. A battle axe in the hands of God. Say yes. Give me Psalm 13 verse 3. I beseech thee. I beseech thee. Psalm 13 verse 3. I beseech thee. Consider and hear me. Yes, o Lord, my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Place your hands on your eyes. Say in the name of Jesus. I destroy the veil over my eyes. Amen. So here was, here was the psalmist praying a prayer. He said, Lord, enlighten down my eyes that I might see, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Koda basada. Ekotondo basadaza. Somebody say the devil is a liar. Come on, say it again. Say it one more time. The African Americans have a saying in America, and it goes this way In nobody mad but the devil. Tell somebody, In nobody mad except the devil. Yeah, somebody is mad and is not anyone but the devil say the devil is a liar come with me please to mark chapter 12 18 and 23 mark 12 18 and 23 somebody say break the cycle break this. give somebody a high five and say break the cycle break i'm not feeling you give it again say break the cycle break the give me high energy break the cycle come on Okay, Mark chapter 12, 18 to 23. Listen. Then some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection uh -huh. came to him and they asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a, man's, it down. Mm -hmm. if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offering, offsprings for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and dying, he left no offspring. And the second took her, and he died, nor did he leave any offspring. And the third likewise. So the seven had her, and left no offspring. Last of them all, the woman also died. Therefore, in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had her as wife. Somebody say, break the cycle. Break the cycle. This is like a story, but it was a reality. And it does happen. If you look at John, the fourth chapter, Jesus met the woman of Samaria. And at the time Jesus met her, she had married five men, not having five men in her life, but she was married to five men and she wasn't with the five, and she was now with the sixth one. 
that she was about to marry the six. So this is a possibility that seven brothers married one woman and every one of them died prematurely without producing a seed for the bloodline and for the family. These are cycles and strange happenings, we call them, or strange patterns. It's not every woman you marry because she's a believer. And it's not every man you marry because he's a believer. I had a lady in my church many, many years ago. I was a young preacher at that time. And she was doing so well, made so much money. She dated three brothers in the church and they all died. And I have a preacher friend of mine, I won't mention his name or where he is, somewhere in the world. He married a lady and she was a believer and she had married four men and they all died. And when he married this lady, he fast and he prays a lot. And one time in his fasting and prayer, he had a revelation and in the revelation he was contending with this big snake. And it was fierce. It was fierce. And he told me about it. And he said, what do you think? I said, I don't think about anything. <laughs> I don't know anything. You need to ask the Lord about what it is. But I understood that that serpent or that snake was responsible of killing the man. To make sure that the woman remains unmarried. And as I'm speaking to you, she's alive today, he's alive today, they are no more together, and she's not married. Two years ago, a young man married in one of my branches from a very, very good home. And from the day of the marriage, every night he wakes up in the morning, beaten with marks around his body and tired. And in the sleep, he will see a man beating him. And he will beat him he wakes up with marks and tired. So after a while, he told the mom, and the mom came to tell me, and I said, ask the mother the circumstances under which he was born. And the mother couldn't have a child, so they went to a river in their village, consulted, performed some rituals, and the mother got pregnant. She had a girl, and they named the girl after the waters, and she stopped performing the ritual because she got born again, and that thing should have been annulled. Whatever she did should have been annulled and she should have raised an altar and established a covenant on the behalf of that child to make it clear that children or human beings were created by God and not by rivers or gods. Something wasn't right and something wasn't well done. As I talk to you, they've gone their separate ways. No more beating at night, no more fighting. He's okay now. I've seen him a few times in church, and I haven't said anything. I don't say a lot. A, a preacher came to me some years ago and said, Papa, every time I fast and I pray, I see a snake sleeping next to me in my bed. What do you think it is? And I say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, and I don't understand your revelation. Ask God. Don't ask me anything. Because if I say anything, and I've done that before when I was young, I used to say things. And then they'll go and tell the wife that Papa said. So this day, I don't say much. <laughs> I listen a lot, and I don't say much. Say, I hear you. Amen. So if you look at John, the fourth chapter, if you look at John, the fourth chapter, Jesus met a woman by the well. And Jesus said to her, go call me your husband. John chapter 4, 16 to 18. Look at Jesus me. said to her, go mm -hmm. call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yes, sir. Jesus said to her, you have said well. Yes, sir. I have no husband. Uh -huh. For you have had five husbands. He didn't say you've had five boyfriends. Oh. And he didn't say you've had five men in your life. He said you've had how many? Five husbands. Go ahead. And the one whom you now have is not your husband mm -hmm. in that you spoke truly. That's it. So she was on the sixth one. And for whatever reason, I believe that Jesus was the seventh one she was targeting. <laughs> but it was a wrong address. Somebody say, I hear you. Amen. So there are things happening. And, and there are a lot of people in the church who are born again, 
but they are babes. They are children. They haven't matured. They haven't come up to sonship. That is one. And then there are so many in the church also who are veiled and they are ignorant of how the rules of engagement operate. Now, let me establish three things here. When you got born again, it was your spirit that was born again because salvation is in three dimensions. Number one, we were saved. Number two, we are being saved. Number three, we shall be saved. What was saved? Your spirit. What is being saved? Your soul. How is your soul saved? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you can be born again and still conform to this world and not be transformed because your mind is still not renewed. Somebody say, I hear you. And your body shall be saved when Jesus comes again. So the enemy can afflict your body. He can oppress your body. A few weeks ago, I had some symptoms of something I dealt with many years ago. And the enemy was trying to put fear in me that that thing is coming back again. And I said, make no mistake. He himself took all my infirmity on the cross. By his stripes, I was healed. And if I was, then I am. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, name above every other name, I dismiss all symptoms. In Jesus' name of any past affliction or infirmity, out. Somebody say, out. Say in the name of Jesus, out. Say, make no mistake. Oh, my enemy, make no mistake. You will not afflict me anymore. No, exact on me anymore. In the name of Jesus. Make no mistake, I will not die prematurely. Make no mistake, I will not be disadvantaged. Make no mistake, I will not go sick. For when it is time for me to depart, I shall call my grandchildren, my sons and daughters and my great grandchildren. And I will say, gather around my bed and let me teach you how a believer dies. Kaboom! Hey, Kusada! Somebody say, hey, 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 hey! Sit down for two minutes. Let me teach you how believers go. We go in style. Tanakadus, Me, Ukada, Satafalusa, Belea to Kan, Deye Katandu Waza. Hey, hey, put your hands together, give him praise. Hallelujah. Somebody say, break the cycle. Sit down for two minutes. Sit down for two minutes. Say, break the cycle. One more time. Let me show you another cycle called the Midianite curse. The Midianite curse. In the book of Judges, in the book of Judges, the sixth chapter, reading from the third to the fourth verse, the Midianite curse. The Midianite curse. For seven years, there was a pattern or a cycle that kept reoccurring in the life of the children of Israel. And the Bible said that at any time, Israel sold. So the thing didn't happen until they sold. Nothing happened until they sold their seed. Whenever they sold or they planted their seed, then the cycle came into effect. It was something that was time sensitive. Somebody say time sensitive. It was a programming in the womb of time that goes into effect anytime Israel sow their seed. When they don't sow, nothing happens. They are good. But as soon as they plant their seed and it is harvest time, the enemy comes. Judges 6, 3 and 4. So it was, whenever Israel had sown, Midianites will come up. Also Amalekites and the people of the east will come up against them then they will encamp against them and destroy the produce of the well, earth. Understand this, ladies and gentlemen, that they didn't come to take the harvest, they came to destroy. Keep that in mind. They didn't come to take it. They weren't interested in the harvest. They were interested in destroying them and making sure they had nothing. They won't take it away. They will destroy it. 
to impoverish Israel. Go ahead. Then they will encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. Now understand something how the enemy works here. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, 11, that we are not ignorant of his devices, lest he gains advantage over us. So watch this. God handed them over to Midian, to the Midianites, for sinning or violating the laws and the precepts of Jehovah. And so for seven years, they were to be afflicted by the Midianites. But there came the Amalekites, and the children of the east. And so whenever the enemy knows that you are in violation of the laws of God, it gives him the advantage and the audacity to afflict you without a legal grounds. Because sin gives the devil a legal ground. Keep that in mind. God never handed them over to the Amalekites or the children of the east. The punishment was the Midianites. But when the Midianites, when the Amalekites and the children of the East who didn't like Israel realized that the Lord had given them up to the Midianites, they took advantage of it. I declare by divine authority that henceforth the enemy will not take advantage of you. That you will not be exploited financially. You will not be exploited emotionally. You will not be exploited psychologically or physically anymore. If you believe it, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Sit down for two minutes. And this continued. It, 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 it kept on reoccurring, negative reoccurring. It was a particular pattern or a cycle that kept on repeating itself for seven years. In the life of the children of Israel, for seven years, the cycle continued. Somebody say, break the cycle. Yes. Oh, I can't feel it. Somebody say, it and say break the cycle. Yes. Come with me to Deuteronomy 2, 3. Deuteronomy 2, 3. Break the cycle. Then God said, you've been going around in circles these hills long enough. Go north. Watch this. For 40 years, the children of Israel kept on going around the same mountain, the same happenings. It kept on reoccurring for 40 years. Year after year, they kept on going around the mountains. They kept on going around the mountains. And that is a wandering spirit. Somebody say a wandering spirit. They wandered. I declare that you will not wander anymore. That your children will not wander in the journey of life in the name of Jesus. That you will have clarity and a sense of direction in life. Say yes. Say yes. And say break the cycle. Break the cycle. Say break the cycle. 40 years wandering in the wilderness of life. For 40 years. That is not your portion. If you believe it, say yes. yes. Come with me to Genesis 12, 11 to 13. Genesis 12, 11 to 14. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, uh -huh. that he said unto Sarai, his yeah. wife, uh -huh. Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Uh -huh. Therefore, it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife. And they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake. Somebody say, break the cycle. Break the cycle. Come on, say it again. Break the, break the cycle. Genesis 26 and 7. And it came to pass. And when, and the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my sister. For he feared to say, she is my wife. Lest, he said, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah because she was fair to look upon. So watch this. Say like father, like son. Come on, say like father, like son. <laughs> say like mother, like daughter. <clears throat> say I hear you. <clears throat> 
So you see, the problem with us believers is we think when we are born again, everything just changes. If before you got born again, you were short. After you get born again, you will still be short. And if you are tall, after you get born again, you are still tall. And if you are overweight, you get born again, you are still overweight. If you are slim, after, weight, after being born again, you will still be slim. If you don't understand these rules of engagement, and you just go walking around, born again, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and demons will fool with you. Because I've seen a lot of believers who just quote scripture and they don't understand what they are saying, and they fool around. But I have learned not to ignore the voice of the enemy. It's very dangerous to ignore the voice of the enemy. The Bible said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. They lack understanding. And because they don't walk in illumination and in light and in revelation, the enemy has an advantage. That's what the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 2, 11, that we are not ignorant of his devices, lest he gains advantage. There are devices, devices in this world. And if you lack understanding, and if you don't have light and illumination, the enemy can have an advantage over you. But today I declare after this service, let him have no advantage over you. I said, let him have no advantage in the name of Jesus. Say, I deny him, I deny him, I deny him of any advantage whatsoever he has. If you believe it, say yes. Sit down for two minutes. So here was Abraham, the father of faith, the friend of God. But there was something about Abraham where he liked a particular kind and type of women. Particular kind. I know, I know young men that I've dealt with over the years. And they will see good sisters in the church. And they don't want them. And they want crazy sisters. <laughs> sisters that are crazy. Like, like Samson. Samson was crazy. He was crazy for some type of women. The parents said, are there no women among our women? Why are you interested in this one? You know what he said? He said, because she pleases me well. She said, our women, they dress like Catholic nuns. They don't know how to do some things. And if you watch Samson, the Bible said, Samson went to Timna. And Timna means a, a place of assignment. Uh, there, was, there was a woman that was laying in wait for him. She was positioned. She was assigned to inject him with a virus. So he went to Timna and told the father and the mother, get her for me. And the woman in Timna had an assignment to inject him with a particular sex virus. And when he got that sex virus, he became so high that after that high, he needed one that was higher than the virus of Timna. So he found himself going to Gaza. And Gaza means a stronghold. He needed some virus and sex virus that was stronger than that of Timna. So he ended up with a prostitute in Gaza. He needed a strong drink, a strong wine. He needed something stronger than that of Timna. Then the Bible says he went down to Gaza went down to Gaza, then went from Gaza, from Timna, he went to Gaza, and then from Gaza, he went into the valley. Ask somebody, where are you? Turn to someone and say, where's your location? Where's your location? He went down to Timna, he went to Gaza, then he went to the valley. And in the valley, by the time he got to the valley, his defenses was already taken. His defenses were, was already neutralized by the harlot of Gaza. And he went down into the valley and met a lady by the name of Delilah. And the word Delilah means delicate and tender. Ah! Adalakatun, Devai Katuan, Selaya Katuanda. Hey! Somebody say, Hey! Somebody say, Mercy! Jesus. And De Delilah, the destiny killer. Say, Delilah, the destiny killer. 
Jesus. Somebody say, help! Somebody say, rescue! Jesus. Molaya Keton Dasada. I was in the country the other day and I was praying for some people and a lady came and said, Papa, I need a breakthrough. And she told me she was having some medical problems and she told me exactly what it was. So I prayed for her and I gave her anointing oil. I carry the anointing oil with me all the time. And I said, I need you to anoint your chest. I need you to anoint your womb, your feet and your head. And she opened the anointing oil. Immediately she started. And I said, hey. Someone say, hey. I said, I said, I said, my darling, my darling, please go home. When you get home, do this, not here. So I was telling one of my bishop what happened. He said, Papa, you are afraid? And I said, brother, I'm not just afraid, I'm, I'm escaping. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, let me tell you the problem with us men of God. Sometimes you can be so sure of your anointing and yourself, and, and you can be in trouble. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It's not everything you look at. There are some things you don't look. You just look somewhere else. And let it pass. Say, let it pass. Yeah, don't be too confident. Are you hearing me, somebody? The Bible says we are of the circumcision of the flesh who have no confidence in ourselves but in God. So don't walk around believing in your gifts and your anointing. Because anointing and gifts are limited. Anointing and gifts, they are limited. It is character that prevails and it is character that guarantees longevity. I was telling my daughter in there about <clears throat> a few weeks ago, myself and a friend of mine, Michael Pitts, were in Abidjan, were talking about some great guys who used to fill stadiums in America and all across the nations who are nowhere to be seen anymore. They were huge. They were mega. Huge and mega. Filled stadiums. And I was saying, we got to learn some lessons from these guys. So we started thinking and we started exchanging notes and trying to understand why they were mega and why they ended up where they've ended up today and they are off the scene and others are still moving. And I realized that God's definition of success is different from man's definition of success. And this journey and ministry is not about numbers and it's not about success. It's about longevity. It's about how long, you know, Ora Robert went to his university and the student said, Mr. President, how do you want to be remembered? And he said, I want to be remembered as one man of God who lasted. I lasted. If you want to last, you must go past gifts and anointings. Because, you see, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. That's why Samson could fool, sleep with prostitute in Gaza, got up the same night at 12 midnight and removed the pillars and the gates of the city. And he was still gifted. So you can still be anointed. You can still be gifted and be fooling around and the anointing and the gift will still operate. But what you don't realize is, the Bible said, the spirit of God will not wrestle with man forever. So there come a time when God gives you a long robe for you to come to yourself and realize that the gift and the anointing is not what you depend on. And I have operated with gifts and I've operated with anointing and I've operated with the presence and I've come to the conclusion that I rather go for the presence than the gift and the anointing. Because there's a difference when you operate by the gift and anointing and the presence and when you are prayed by the present, it's easy. It's simple. You don't fret. You don't struggle when the presence is there. And the presence don't come without purity and sanctification. You can, you can walk in, in sin, in disobedience, in pride, in arrogance, and still have the gift of prayer. You must understand that Samson walked in disobedience and he still was anointed. He was still powerful. Moses was in disobedience. God told him, speak to the rock. He smote the rock and water still came out. And God said, get out of the way. 
but realized that even though he was in disobedience, water still came out of the rock because the gift was for the benefit of the people and not the benefit of Moses. So God will still use you to bless his people and from the sake of the people, he will left the gift of praise. But at the end of the day, God will deal with you. And that is the scary thing about ministry that I've come to learn all these years. That the fact that you are still flowing the anointing and the gift is still flowing don't mean that God is with you. It means that God is honoring the gift. Somebody said to me, Papa, how can people fool around and the gift still operate? And I said, the name of Jesus. He said, he said, when I come, many shall come and say, Lord, Lord, we raise the dead in your name. We perform miracles in your name. Mighty deeds in your name. Great and works in your name. And he will say, I know you not. Workers of iniquity, depart from me. What does that word iniquity mean? It means lawlessness. What does it auto mean? It means that you serve God on your own terms and not on his terms. You were not accountable. You were not responsible to anybody. You were a law to yourself. And so God said, even though the gifts operated and you use my name, I still don't know you. And I said, you can take my car key, go to the car park and start my car and move my car. And the car won't say, you are not mine. The car will not refuse you because the car is designed to respond to the key, not to the owner. So the name of Jesus, for it is written at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee of things in heaven, on earth, and on that year shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the name of Jesus is a key. When you speak that name, the enemy must respond. Sickness must respond. But it is not you because the disciples came. Luke 10, 19, and they said, even the unclean spirit are subject to us through your name. So it is the name, not us. Not us. None of us are so anointed and so gifted that demons bow. Demons don't care about who we are. They don't respect you for how many scriptures you can quote. They respect the name. They respect the presence. Somebody say, talk to me. Somebody say, break the, break the cycle. Say it again. Say, break the cycle. Break the cycle. So you look at the Abrahamic family <clears throat> and you realize that every one of them were into fair women. They were att they attracted to a particular kind of women. And there are sisters in the church, born again, Holy Ghost field, who are attracted to a particular kind and type of men, lazy men, men who don't work, men who don't do anything, men who are carnal, men who are not spiritual, men that will just sleep with them, take their money but won't work. They like that kind. They don't like good men and responsible brothers for whatever reason, and they don't even know why they're attracted to those kind of, um, those kind of men. It's a programming, and if you watch the bloodline, it's a pattern. And there are men in the church, there are brothers, Holy Ghost filled brothers, who like a particular kind and type of women with a particular kind of shape, size, and butt, and breast, and nose, and eye. You are looking at me. Somebody say, break the cycle. And they are in the church. And if you look at this particular pattern of the type and kinds of women that these bloodline were in love with, it came out to many, many, many generations, to the 11th generation called Solomon. And if you look at, if you look at, if you look at Solomon, the writings of Solomon, you, you will see how he talked about the fairest of, hmm? you remember? Yeah, 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 Sons of Solomon is there. I don't want to go into that. You know? And it was all about fair women and fair women and fair women. The thing was swimming in the blood. All the way from Father Abraham to the 11th generation. It was in the blood. And when he came to Solomon, he married 300 wives and 700 concubines. 1,000 women. You're looking at me. And you are not more born again than Abraham. Amen. Even though they weren't born again in their times. 
And you can look at me any way you want to look at me. But these things happen. And I've seen them. I don't want to go into details because if I go into details, some of you will backslide. You won't serve the Lord anymore. But I'm just telling you that there are cycles that need to be broken. So in the life of Abraham, he married a fair woman and he lied. Isaac married a fair woman and lied. Then Jacob also lied. There was a lying spirit that was flowing in this family. Come with me to Genesis 27, 18 and 19. Genesis 27, 18 and 19, quickly. And he came unto his father and said, My father, he said, Here I am. Who art thou, my son? Mm -hmm. And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou hast, thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison that my soul, your soul may bless me. Now, watch this. Was Jacob Esau? Talk to me. Was he Esau? He lied. It's a pattern. It's a cycle in the bloodline. I was dealing with a friend of mine. He used to fill stadiums in America years ago. He had a problem, and the ministry went down. So he would come, we will pray, <clears throat> he and I, for some time. One time I was praying, <clears throat> and the Lord said, there is an issue of innocent blood that is speaking against his bloodline, and he needs to settle it. So I called him. I said, hey, buddy, what's up? And we talked. And I said, is there any issue of blood, some kind of a, a blood that was shed in your bloodline? He said, we can't talk about this. Can you come down? So I flew. We met. He lived in a city in America, in California. And we drove to the mountains, and we started walking. And he said, my grandfather slew a human being. He killed a human being in the plantation. And found out later on that the man was innocent, but he had killed the person. And because he was so powerful and had money, the authorities had to let him go. They didn't charge him. And then he told me something that was very strange that happened to his grandfather. The same thing happened to him, to his father. And his father was a believer. He was an elder in his church. And the same thing happened to him also. And I said, wow. And I said, you need to silence the cry of that blood and obtain divine exemption. And you need to dismiss any case and charge held against you in the courts of heaven and in any satanic court of jurisdiction, the case must be dismissed on the account of the blood that was shed. That that cry of the blood must be silenced and the enemy cannot make any claims and demand whatsoever about the consequence of the innocent blood. Like women that perform things like abortion and everything, God will forgive you, but Satan will hold it against you. And the problem with sin is this, that we don't, we don't understand is that God will forgive us, but Satan holds it. He uses it. And whenever the devil brings up your past, it's an indication that he has nothing new on you. So he has to bring up the past as a way to ensnare you and get you back. Somebody say, here, I hear you. Somebody say, break the cycle. So you see a particular cycle going on in each one life. Because of time, I will mention some few things. I'll give you the scriptures. Abraham married and his wife was barren for 25 years. Sarah was barren for 25 years. Then Isaac married Rebekah. Rebekah was barren for 20 years. Then Jacob married two women. The woman he wanted wasn't the one that was given to him. He wanted Rachel and he worked seven years for a woman. That is an issue we'll deal with. It's another subject for another day. So I don't want to go into it. What makes a man work seven years for a woman? That woman really carries something. Amen. And he gave up all his privileges. Seven years for one woman. And when the time came for him to marry, he married in the night. So he lacked light. He didn't have enough light and revelation. Number two, the woman was wearing a veil so he couldn't see what he was marrying. Is it possible you can marry something you don't see and you don't know? Yes. Don't be fooled. This enemy we are dealing with is very good. Anyway, let's move on. So he married in the night. And then 
he took the woman to his tent and was with her all night long and didn't know that it was Leah and not Rachel. I believe that he was drunk. The father-in-law made sure that he was drunk because he should have known through the whole night you are with a woman and you don't know that this is Leah and not Rachel, he was drunk. He woke up in the morning when the light came and he had light and he saw that it was Leah and not Rachel. He said, hey, a man, man, bro. <laughs> then he ran to the father-in-law and said, what have you done to me? And the father-in-law said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There is a law in our land that will not allow us to give you the youngest in marriage while the elder is not married. So if you still want Rachel, you have to work for another seven years. 14 years for one woman. He wanted Rachel. He ended up with four women. Rachel was barren for 14 years. I'll give you all the scriptures. And Leah was also barren. All two wives were barren. And the Lord said, when the Lord, the Bible said, when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb and she also gave birth. And Leah gave birth to three children. After that, her womb was shut. So she gave her maid to Jacob to produce children on her behalf. And Rachel couldn't have children. So she also gave her maid to Jacob to produce children for her. Then Abraham's wife also gave her maid to the husband to produce children for her. Somebody say calculations. Somebody say manipulations. Somebody say programmings. Say patterns of the bloodline and say cycles. Come with me to Genesis 38. Genesis 38, 6 to 11, look at something quickly. Genesis 38. Genesis 38, 6 to 11. Uh -huh. In the course of time, listen carefully. Judah arranged for his firstborn son, uh -huh. Er, to marry a young woman named Tamar. Tamar, go ahead. But Er was a wicked man in the Lord's sight. He did something that displeased the Lord. So and the Lord we, took his life. We, we must always pray for our children like Job did, that they will never displace the Lord. And we must plead for them all the time. I was telling my church the other day, I said, if you have children, be careful what you say about other people's children. If you have children, be careful what you say about other people's children. Because it doesn't matter how well you raise them up. There will always be something that doesn't add up. One time a sower went to sow good seed and when men slept an enemy came and so tears and the servant said master did you not raise up these kids well did you not sow a good seed what happened and the servant the master look at the servant and he says son don't worry about what i did wrong or right an enemy has done this an enemy has done this you can raise them up well and an enemy can interfere an enemy can do some things and until you understand how the rules of engagement work to override some things, you ask yourself, what did I do wrong? It's not what you did wrong, it's what you did right. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Then Judah said to Er's brother Onan, uh -huh. Go and marry Tamar as our Lord. Somebody say, break the cycle. Break the cycle. Talk to me. Say, break the cycle. Break the cycle. Give me high energy. Say, break the cycle. His firstborn married Tamar and did evil in the sight of God and the Lord killed him. He died prematurely. I pray that you and your house will be exempted from the curse of premature death. Yeah. That you will not go down prematurely, yeah. but you will last in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Say, make no mistake. Yeah. I will outlive every enemy and adversary of mine. I will outlive them all. Sit down for two minutes. Quickly, let me finish. Go ahead. Then Judah said to Er's brother, Onan, mm -hmm. go and marry Tamar, uh -huh. as our law requires of the brother of a man who has died. Uh -huh. You must produce an heir for your brother. Uh -huh. But Onan was not willing to have a child 
who will not be his own heir. Yes. So whenever he had intercourse with his brother's wife, uh -huh. he spilled the semen on the ground. This prevented her from having a child who would belong to his brother. But the Lord considered it evil for Onan to deny a, a child to be his dead brother. So the Lord took Onan's life too. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, go back to your parents' home and remain a widow until my son Sheila is old enough to marry you. But Judah didn't really intend to do this because he was afraid. Sheila would also die, Hear like me. his two brothers. Hear me. Say, break the pattern. Break the pattern. Say, break the, break the cycle. The first son died prematurely. Second son died prematurely. Whether it was about the woman or it, it was something that had to do with Judas' bloodline is another matter for another day. I don't want to go into the details. But it's very clear here that the two brothers died when they married that woman. And I think that before any brother marries a woman, you got to investigate the bloodline. You got to look at, you know, in the old days, before you marry, when you tell your parents, they will always send to go find out about the family of the man or the woman and the house you are going into. This generation, we are like the Samson generation, sight generation, social media generation. We marry through social media. You see her, and we like the looks. But you got to go past looks because looks changes. And in the matter of time, what you are looking at will melt. And when it melts, you need more than looks to keep it together. Somebody say, break the cycle. Yes. Come on, talk to me. Say, break the cycle. Yes. And the father said, I don't want to lose the third born. So I will, let, I will not let him marry her. I don't want to go into the details of what she did. This woman was no joke. She was no joke. She was very sophisticated. She set up the father-in-law, slept with the father-in-law, produced twins, and God bypassed the third bone who he was pre preserving for the inheritance of the bloodline of Judah to produce a king for Judah. God bypassed him and went and took one of the twins born out of wedlock. To fulfill the demands of God when it comes to the bloodline of Judah. I understand that I don't understand. Are you hearing me? I don't get it. I don't understand why God did that, but he did. Say, break the cycle. Come with me to two scriptures and I'll finish. Joshua 6 and 26. Joshua 6, 26. At that time, Joshua invoked this curse. Mm -hmm. May the curse of the Lord fall on anyone who tries to rebuild the town of Jericho mm -hmm. at the cost of the firstborn son. He will lay its foundation at the cost of his youngest son. He will set up its gates. First Kings sixteen thirty four. In Ahab's time, Hiel of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. He laid its foundations at the cost of his firstborn son Abiram, and he set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segu. Somebody say, break the cycle. I can't hear you say it one more time. Break the cycle. So here was a programming. Say programmings. Come on, talk to me. Say programmings. In the womb of time. Say it, in the womb of time. Say time sensitive. Programmings. In the womb of time that goes into effect at certain seasons of our life. There was a woman that was suffering from an issue of blood. For 12 years, she couldn't break the cycle. She was hemorrhaging for 12 years. She could not break the cycle. There are so many of you here, you are dealing with prolonged battles. Some battles and contentions have been going on for too long in your life and I came by the prophetic word to announce that this is the end of it. It ends here in the name of Jesus. The financial struggle and battles is coming to an end. Psalm 7 verse 9, he said, Oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. I came to declare today that the battle is over. 
That financial battle is over. That marital battle is over. The battle between you and your wife is over. That prolonged battle over your children is over. That prolonged battle over your health is over. You will go to the doctor and you will have a clean medical report. Amen. That battle and contention over your health is over. Amen. If you believe it's over, put your hands together and scream. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible said that there was a prolonged battle between the house of David and the house of Jacob. A prolonged battle. I don't know what kind of prolonged battle you are dealing with. Are you hearing me, somebody? I have dealt with some prolonged battle. What, one person that dealt with some serious prolonged battles and certain cycles in his life was Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Look at, look at 2 Corinthians. Look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, Paul talked about a thorn. Say a thorn. Talk to me. Say a thorn. A thorn. Somebody say a thorn. Today, let the tongue come to an end. Amen. Let the tongue come to an end. Amen. Say yes. Yes. Give somebody a high and say the tongue is over. The tongue is over. Let the tongue come to an end. Clap your hand and say the tongue, the tongue, the tongue is coming to an end. It's coming to an end. Now, look at, look at 2 Corinthians 11. 11, 23 to 28. Look at it. Let me end with it. 2 Corinthians. Say break the cycle. I can't hear you say break the cycle you know I, I didn't come to preach to every one of you I came to preach to somebody I don't know who that somebody is. but I'm telling you today if you will receive this prophetic word setting cycles in your life will break setting tongue 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 tongues are coming to an end you know what a tongue is in bay in bay in case in case is being uprooted in the name of Jesus Jesus said the other day, he said, any plant that my father did not plant it shall be rooted out. I came and I declare that tongues have been rooted out. Certain things have been rooted out. Somebody say, come on, out, 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 out. Look, look at Paul. Look at Paul, 2 Corinthians, quickly, let me finish with this. 2 Corinthians 11. 11, 23, yeah. uh -huh. 23. Listen. Are they ministers of Christ? Uh -huh. Listen to Paul. I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant. Paul said, if anybody is questioning what I'm saying, if they are ministers of Christ, I am a, I'm more anointed than them. Let nobody make an, uh, let nobody raise an objection here. Objection over rude. He said, I'm telling you, as a minister, I'm more a minister than them. And listen to what Paul said. Go ahead. In stripes above measure. He said in stripes beaten above measure. In prisons more frequently. He said in prison. That means frequently. It, it, it was something that was a cycle, a pattern. It kept on happening. And said, I'm Paul. I've seen Jesus. I've been to the third world. But I've been to prison several times. It was an ongoing thing. A cycle, a pattern. Go ahead. In deaths often. In death often. Often. He kept on reoccurring times of danger. I faced danger, assassination attempts. And I've been there. I know what it means to be assassinated in this country. I've been through things. Go ahead. From the Jews, five times I received five times stripes. Negative reoccurrence. He kept on reoccurring. And Paul said, I am Apostle Paul. I wrote all the Pauline revelation. But I've seen some cycles and negative patterns in my life. Go ahead. Three times I was beaten. Three rocks. times. Beaten three times. Negative cycles. Once Say break the cycle. Stoned. Say break, 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 break. Say hey, break hey, the cycle. Hey, hey, hey. Give somebody a high and Say break, 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 break the cycle. Break the cycle. Break the cycle. Go ahead. Once I was stoned. Uh -huh, stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. How many times have you been stoned? How many times have you been shipwrecked? Go ahead. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In the deep. Go ahead. In journeys often. In journeys often. In perils of waters. Yes, sir. In perils of rubbish. Yes, sir. In perils of my own countrymen. Talk to me. Betrayals. Betrayals within. 
Betrayers without. Betrayers by countrymen and women. Betrayers, domestic betrayers and external betrayers. Betrayers home and abroad. Betrayers within and without. You think you've been betrayed before? Paul said, I was betrayed by my own. Madu Makas. If Alanda Kawasan, Ilai Katahan, Imandu Kawahasada. Been betrayed many times. Betrayed by my own brethren, by the best. Go ahead. In perils of the Gentiles. Yes, sir. In perils in the city. Taluka In perils in the wilderness. Mayaka Talahas. Perils in the sea. Yes, sir. In perils among false brethren. False brethren, yes, sir. In weariness and toil. Yes, sakut. In sleeplessness often. Akimaduasa. In hunger and thirst. Eluta kandu asia. In fastings often. Salanda kamahadu wadis. In cold and naked. Adilaku tuanda kasa. Cold. And Beside the other things, yes, sir. what comes upon me daily, yes, my benefits. deep concern for all the churches. Yes, sir. Hear me. Who is weak? I am not weak. Uh -huh. He said, who I... is weak? And I'm not weak. Who is made to stumble? Uh -huh. And I do not burn with indignation. If I must boast, uh -huh. I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who Stop is there. blessed forever. Stop there. It's okay. It's just too much. It's just too much. I just brought this to settle some arguments. Are you hearing me? Because I know a lot. I've worked with the best. I know Dr. Lester Samron. I know Ora Roberts. When I was taken to heaven some few years ago, they took me to a high mountain and they showed me a city. And the angel said, that is the city of T.L. Osborne. And I said, that is my grandfather in the faith. I came back to my body a few weeks ago. A few weeks after that, I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was leaving Tulsa, and I called Elsie. I flew with Continental to Houston and to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the Lord said, change the routing. Go through Chicago. So I called Elsie. I said, Elsie, route me through Chicago. He said, well, I said, I don't know. Just get me through Chicago. I got to Chicago Airport. And my flight was delayed for two hours. So I decided to go have cappuccino at Starbucks. I was in the line waiting for my turn to have cappuccino. Then I heard the voice of the Lord and he said, lift up your head and look. And I lifted up my head and I looked to my right side. T.L. Osborne was sitting there having coffee. And I went to him and I said, Grandpa. And he said, Nicholas, sit down. And I said, Grandpa, I saw your city in heaven. And he said, I know. That's why I'm over 80 and I'm still preaching the gospel. Are you hearing me? T.L. Osborne lost his only son, his only son, overdose of drugs. Morello lost his son. We were in London having a great convention and a call came that his son had died with overdose of drugs in the bathroom. Stand on your feet. Lift up your hands. Makuda sees. Let the cycle break today. I don't know the cycles you are dealing with, but everybody is dealing with some cycle or the other. Today, let the cycle break. Let negative reoccurrence in your life break. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. there are certain people today who must touch the altar. Are you hearing me? There are some people who must touch the altar. I don't know why, but there are some people who must just touch the altar. Are you hearing me, somebody? Daguzi, Madis, Ekutu, Dan, Kisand, Batum, Wakasan, De Lavanda, Kusi, Mali, Itayakundi, Wasalanda, Masata. But today, let's demonic cycles break amen let negative cycles break amen. in the name of jesus let every demonic patterns in your life in your family break amen. everybody wherever you are put your hands together begin to command demonic cycles to break Rapper, 
to go to the other side to the overflow and come back but let me give you some spiritual instructions look at me i want you to look at me i want to give you a key if you follow it well you'll be shocked to see what god will do and this is the key hear me everybody go back to your seat i'll show you something i want to give you a key i want you to look at me the power of the altar is determined by the gift you put on the altar don't forget this for the rest of your life. The altar, the power of the altar is determined by the gift you put on the altar. It is the sacrifice on the altar that determines the power of the altar. So I'm going to ask everybody here, everybody, aisle by aisle, or just direct them to come to the altar with a sacrifice. I'm not talking about a seed. There's a difference between a seed and a sacrifice. A sacrifice is something that costs you. A sacrifice is something dear to you. A sacrifice is something that you, you are holding on to, precious, that you won't let go. Put a sacrifice on the altar. That is what determines the power and the strength of an altar. It's not every altar I put my seed on. I have a very powerful altar. And men and preachers, I won't mention their name, have come from different parts of the world to place an altar, to place a seed on my altar. And they'll send me a text and say, Papa, I place a seed. Sometimes the seed is heavy. And I'll say, who brought this? And they don't know who. And security, I say, go, go back. Go back. Let me see the cameras. And they go back. We have cameras. And I will see the person. And they say, Papa, I brought that seed. Heavy seed. And they said, there is something about your altar. There is something about your altar. The strength of this altar is not the altar. It's the sacrifices you place on this altar. You can make this altar one of the strongest in this life, in this land, by what you place on it. But make sure you are putting a sacrifice and not a seed. And a sacrifice is something that costs you. If you just do ordinary offerings, your altar will not speak for you. But if you know how, you see, some, listen, Solomon's mother did something scary. She did something scary. God rejected the first child that came out of that relationship David the king had with Belsheba. God said, I condemn this relationship and the child, I will not have it. And God never recognized Belsheba as David's wife. The Bible always called Belsheba, Belsheba, the wife of Uriah. But Belsheba did something. She did something that was powerful. The Bible didn't tell us the details, but God rejected the firstborn. Then the same God bypassed Adonijah, bypassed Absalom, and went for the second child that came out of the womb of Belsheba, and God named him Solomon because I have loved him. Then Belsheba said to Solomon, he said this, watch this. He said, Solomon, Solomon, the son of my womb and the son of my vow. The son of my vow. The Bible never told us what that vow was, but she did something. She turned something around 
and God accepted Solomon. I don't get it. I don't get it. Hear me. Hear me. Some of you, I cannot tell you what the sacrifice is, but you know what the sacrifice is. And for some of you, it will take a sacrifice to turn something around. Because for some of you here, when my father died, eh, and we went to my village, and I saw the house my father was born in, everything that never made sense to me about my personal warfare made sense to me. And I said, okay, now I understand my warfare and my battles. And I knew exactly what to say and how to pray. And after that, I told my driver, turn the car, move. And I've never stepped foot there again. And I told the people in the village, the connection between me and you is this man in the casket. And after I bury him, there is no contact and connection between me. I sever all links with you. I'm like Abraham. I'm getting out of here. And I am obtaining divine exemptions divine exemption and I discharge myself from every charge against my father's children in any court of jurisdiction and in the courts of heaven I declare myself acquitted and discharged and I walk free hear me today as I go to the overflow to pray for them so they also feel they are important line by line before you leave this auditorium come to this altar don't put an offering not your tithe, not the seed, but the sacrifice. Make sure that it's something that goes beyond your normal giving. Hear me, listen. I had prepared four messages to preach. Four. Four messages. And the only one that took hold of my spirit was what I preached on. Every one of them was in my head. Everyone was in my head. They were all messages that would make sense and appeal to your logic. But the Lord said, go with what I put in your spirit. Don't mind them. Don't look at their faces. I know the need of my children. And go there and declare, cycles and patterns must break. Amen. There is a wickedness. There is a thorn in somebody's flesh. There is a prolonged battle in the life of my children. Go and declare, let it come to an end. Let it come to an end. Lift up your hands. Heavenly Father, you know those who are your children. Speak to them in a language that they can understand. To everyone that comes here in obedience with a sacrifice and not a seed, let there be a performance. Let there be a performance of the word of the Lord in their lives. And in all that they do, that they might know that you have sent your servant among them. That your servant has come among them. That within these hundred days, we are doing a hundred days of prayer. It's online. You can join us. Hundred days of prayer. You go to my Facebook, Archbishop Nick. We are praying for hundred days, three times a day for hundred days. We started 15th of September to 31st December. Hundred days. Within these hundred days of prayer, let there be divine interventions. Amen. Let your fortunes be restored. Amen. Let there be divine recoveries Amen. of wasted years, Jesus. of lost opportunities. Amen. And today we intercept spiritual assassins. Jesus. We intercept spiritual wickedness. Amen. We intercept warlocks. Yes. We intercept spiritual hijackers, Jesus. destiny hijackers, Jesus. destiny killers. Jesus. We intercept, we repeal and revoke their powers. Amen. We discharge you from the curse Amen. and the consequence of demonic covenant and demonic altars in your father's house and in your mother's house. Look at me. Look at me. There are altars in all of our backgrounds. All of us here. I'm telling you. When I went to bury my father, that was when I understood altars. And I said, oh, I see. This is the thing that has been creating problems. I will deal with you well, well. On the account of the blood of Jesus. Today, as you bring your sacrifice on this altar, let your father's altar. Jesus. And, and you see, I was counting something the other day. When the Bible said, I'll visit the iniquities of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. And I realized that from my father, my grandfather, to me, I'm the third generation. My children are the fourth generation, and my grandchildren are the fifth generation. So I said, I get it. 
I get it. And so it started making sense when I look at the battles of my children. I said, oh, I see. They are the fourth generation. This thing must end with the fourth generation. It must not go beyond the fourth generation. So I told my children, I said, this is what is in my bloodline. And I'm telling you. So don't do me these tongues, 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 tongues. This is the reality. You have to negate and annul. You have to discontinue and detach and disengage. And I said, I want my grandchildren who are the fifth generation to be exempted and to be acquitted and discharged from any charge of the iniquity of my grandfather and great-grandfather and mother and bloodline that anything that spoke as a demonic altar in my father's house, in my mother's house, that is making claim on the third and fourth generation, which is you people and my, my grandchildren who are the fifth generation, this voice of that altar, whatever sacrifice was placed on that altar, whether it was an animal blood, or it was a human blood, let it be silence. Yeah. Say, silence. silence. Come on, come on, you are being too religious. Say, silence. silence. In the name of Jesus, we silence every cry yes. of any altar. Jesus. Wherever it's coming from, yes. let that cry be silence. Yes. Say, silence. silence. The other thing, hear me. Listen, I've dealt with things. Oh. This man you see standing here, if I tell you some things, you'll be shocked. I put my own hand in fire. My hand was put in fire. I put my hand in fire. They tried to kill me. They couldn't kill me. So they programmed me to self-destruct. We call it the case of self-destruction of self-sabotage. So I put my own hand in fire and my hand began to burn. And I lost it. That was how I got born again. So me, I understand some things that you don't read from books. Paul said, what we have seen, what we have proven and handled is what we declare unto you. Are you hearing me? So the things I'm telling, I didn't read it from a book. I didn't listen to a preacher. There are only few people I listen to. I listen to the fathers. And most of the people I listen to, they are dead. Are you hearing me? To listen to anybody living, you must carry some wells and depths. It's not everything I listen to. I don't listen to logic. I listen to people who have been tested and tried. And hear me. Claims and demands that are made on you has to do with covenants and altars in your bloodline. I'm telling you. And some of you standing here, certain claims and demands have been made on you. And the claims and demands made on you eh, and your children is based on certain covenants and certain altars in your bloodline. And it's a result of certain sacrifices that was made and that has been made on those altars and on those covenants that gives the enemy the legal right and the audacity to make certain claims and demands on you. And there are some of you here. I was dealing with a situation. A young man in Cape Coast, one of our branches, got up in the morning and felt that he should go to the sea. Born again. And he went to the sea, jumped into the sea and was drowned and died. And when I heard it, the pastor said, Papa, 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 what was that? And I said, he was beckoned. They beckoned him. And I said, check his background. Check his background. And when they checked the background, his grandfather was a fisherman. They did some things. They performed certain rites, and the powers in the sea back on him. Recently, a ship, a boat, went down to the Titanic. I don't know if you heard about it. It was on the news, the Titanic. Let me explain something to you. 100 years ago, there was a man and his wife on the Titanic. And when the Titanic went down, they also went down. They were the founders of Masons. You know Masons? Yeah, in London. Now, the boat that went down, that man that went down 100 years ago, his great granddaughter is the one married to the man who went in with his son. Who went down with the son. Now watch this. This new boat went down 
hundred years ago the same day the titanic went down the media was saying it and i was saying to myself they can't get it they are predict they are telling us history and they themselves don't understand what they are saying so somebody said papa what do you think happened i said it's a demonic pattern and i said the spirit of that old one the founder of medicine had bet on and called for the soul of one from the bloodline hundred years after may nothing back on you Jesus. in the spirit in the name of Jesus yes. may nothing cause you to kill Jesus. or to hang your life Jesus. in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. years ago a young man went to a bridge in New York the stepmother was in my church great guy loved the Lord and he wrote some things before he went to the before he went to that bridge in New York and he jumped into the river and died and the stepmother she's my daughter she came to say Papa I can't take it Papa what is this and I said he was back on he was back on and I said check the bloodline and when they check, he came back and told. I said, "That is it. He was back on." And this is how they do. It. They make claims, they make demands through imagination. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse five. Imaginations. They imagine. They have expectations, and they make demands and they make claims. But today, I stand on the account of the blood, Jesus. and I declare. Any demands that have been made, Jesus. any claims that has been made Jesus. on your life, your children, your grandchildren, your future, let it be dismissed. Amen. Dismiss. Amen. Put your hands and say, Dismiss, dismiss. Dismiss, dismiss. 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 Put your hands and say dismiss. Hear me. Hear me. Bishop Johnny is coming to lead us in prayer whilst I go to the other side. Years ago, I was introduced to a mecca church in a city in America, I won't mention the name, by my father in the faith, Archbishop Idahosa. The church was over 7,000. Everybody who was anybody in America preached in that church. Huge, mega. Then something happened in that church and the church went down. Then, few years after, another guy inherited that church and he invited me to preach. So when I finished preaching, I was in his office and I told him, I said, hey, I know the history of this church. There is something about this church you have to deal with. And when I told him, he looked at me strangely because um, he's a good preacher, very good teacher, a scholar. And I looked at him and I shook my head and I said, you, you haven't been tested and tried, young man. I didn't see anything. Years after, I was preaching in a church in Baltimore called Rock City Church, Bishop Bat Pierce. Whilst I was preaching, I saw that preacher at the back sitting there. After the service, I called and said, come here, what do you want here? He said, I came to see you. And I said, what happened? He said, you remember what you told me? The same thing has happened to me. Same thing. He also lost the church. And I said, it is something to do with the land where this church is I said there is an altar here then few years after I, I, I preached for a friend of mine who had 30,000 people in his church also in America after preaching I went to his office and I said this land where your church is eh, once upon a time it was a cemetery they used to bury red Indian people here he said, how do you know? I said, investigate it. And he called me later and said, yes, it's true. There was a cemetery here. And I said, then you must deal with it. Because whatever it is will kill what you are doing here. He said, what should I do? I said, you have to come to Ghana. I can't help you. Come to Ghana. I was with him with my daughter, Paula White. So when we walk out, Paula said, what do you think? I said, he won't come. He will not come. He has too much money. He's huge. He has 30,000 people. He won't come. He 
It was not long. Big name, big guy. Pam! Went down. Lost his church. The pastor that was in that church, I told, is now, now has taken over this guy's church. Trying to rebuild it. The same thing that happened to that bishop before he died has started happening to him. And he's a friend of one of my sons in Ghana. So my son told him, Charlie, go and see Papa. Oh. Go and see Papa. So my son called me and said, Papa, he wants to come. He said, I said, me, I'm here. If he wants, he should come. I'm here. We'll help him. But I'm not going there. And I'm not preaching for him. I'm not going to spend my anointing to go and fight certain battles that are not my battles. It's not every battle you fight. You remember David went to fight the battle of Ziggler? That battle, Osofo, was not David's battle. It was the battle of the Philistines. He shouldn't have gone to fight that battle. And when he went and came back, his house and family has been invaded. Wives and children, and the children and the wife of all his mighty men was taken into captivity. Why? He shouldn't have gone to fight that battle. It's not every battle you fight. Hear me. I choose my battle wisely. When you see me fighting somebody, it means the person is already finished. I finish you before I fight. If I don't fight you, that means there is hope for you. But when I engage you, you are finished. Because I, I choose my battle wisely. Lift up your hands. Whilst we are in prayer, I want you to come line after line with your seed, especially your, your sacrifice. Place it on the altar. Don't just bring anything. Come with your sacrifice. And remember, the power of the altar is determined by the sacrifice on the altar. Whilst we are praying, come here with your sacrifice. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up.
with your hands lifted up all over this place in the overflow online wherever you are across the nations say heavenly father, heavenly father. I have heard your word and I recognize, I realize that in the days of ignorance, someone in my bloodline cut a deal, made a deal with the enemy, cut a covenant, established an evil altar that has given the adversary an occasion a legal ground a legal argument and an advantage to afflict me and my bloodline my soul and my body that is being redeemed that shall be redeemed therefore on the account of the blood of your son Jesus today I dismiss demonic grounds, legal arguments, legal grounds, consequence of demonic altars and covenants of my father's house, my mother's house, from my grandfather to my great grandfather to my generation to that of my children and my grandchildren. Today, in the name of Jesus, I silence the voice. The, voices, the, voices, the, cry the cry of any covenant, of any, covenant any, blood, any blood, any sacrifice, any, sacrifice, any, consequence, any consequence. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, silence that, I voice, silence that voice. I dismiss, I dismiss any charge, any claim, any, any demands, any demand, and anything, and anything beckoning my soul, beckoning the soul of my children and my grandchildren. My to stumble, to, stumble, to, falter, to falter, to fall, to, fall, to, be, ambushed, to be ambushed, to be enslaved, to, be enslaved, to, make, me or anyone, to make me or anyone that concerns me, that concerns me a, victim, a victim or a casualty or a, casualty, or a, scapegoat. Or a scapegoat. Today in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I dismiss all such I dismiss all and I break negative I patterns. Break negative I destroy, destroy negative cycles. Negative cycles. Let there be, Let there be divine, divine reactions, reactions in, the in the realms of the spirit. Let there be, Let there be a divine, divine reaction reactions in my father's house, in my, father's house, in my mother's house. In my mother's house. Let, somebody go down. Let somebody go down. Let somebody go down. Let somebody fall. Let somebody fall. Let, somebody fall. Let, somebody fall. Let, demonic, Let demonic, satanic, satanic apostles, apostles and prophets and, prophet, and the priests, the, priest, the high priests, Priest yeah, priest. of that covenant of that altar in my father's house in my mother's house let them go down let them fall let somebody go for me go for my children go for my grandchildren as I put my hands together and force it and force it and force it and force it somebody will go somebody is going for you I will not be a scapegoat make no mistake I will not be a scapegoat my children will not be a scapegoat my grandchildren will not be a scapegoat make no mistake make no mistake I will not be a scapegoat my children will not be a scapegoat make no mistake I will not be a victim I will not be a casualty of any altar, of any covenant, of any sacrifice. In the name of Jesus, of my father's house, my mother's house, my bloodline. In the name of Jesus, lift it up and force it. And force 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 in the name of Jesus and force and force and force and force and force and force in the name of Jesus now hear me lift up your right hand lift up your right hand 
Say, make no mistake. Make no mistake. Oh my enemy. Oh my enemy. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. I will not be a scapegoat. I will not be a scapegoat. My children will not be a scapegoat. My grandchildren will not be a scapegoat. My wife, my husband, and them that concerns me will not be a scapegoat. Say, I will not be a victim. I will not be a casualty of any demonic altar, of the claims of any sacrifice, covenant of my father's house and of my mother's house. In the name of Jesus, I annul the power of demonic sacrifices, altars, covenants that are speaking and reacting through the sun by day and the moon by night and the terror by night or the oracles of the enemy or the horns of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, I command by lightning, by thunder, let there be a divine massacre, massacre, and onslaught in the camp of the enemy right now. As I put my hands together, let there be, let it be divine let it be massacre, onslaught in the camp of the enemy, in the dwellings of the wicked. Let there be divine massacre, onslaught in the camp of the enemy. Let somebody go down. Somebody go down. In the name. Somebody go down. Jesus. Somebody go down. In the name of Jesus. Let somebody go down. We push by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of now, Jesus. Let him fall. Jesus. Hear me. The Bible said in Isaiah 49, verse 24 to 26. He said. I will contend with them that contend with your children. Amen. And then he said, those who seek your blood Jesus. will be drunk with their own blood. Amen. And those who seek your flesh Jesus. will be fed with their own flesh. Yes, Lord. I declare by divine authority Jesus. before heaven and hell, Amen. anyone Jesus. who desire our blood, Jesus. anyone who desire our flesh, Jesus. let them be fed with their own blood. Yeah. Let them be drunk with their own blood. Yeah. Let them be fed with their own flesh. Yeah. Hear me. Ah. One of my sons came to me a few years ago. I won't mention his detail. His first name is Kofi. He works somewhere here in Ghana. And he came to me and said, Papa, he's a very good titer. He helped the church a lot. He said, Papa, there's a new guy appointed by the government and he has targeted me for no reason. I don't know what I've done. And he's very connected in high places. And he said, he's going to take my job for me and will bring somebody else. He himself is not qualified. He doesn't have any knowledge of the work, but he was very loyal to his party and has been given a political position, but he has no capacity. He doesn't understand the job and he has targeted me. So I said to him, bring me anointing oil. He brought the oil. And I anointed him. And I said, Lord, why should whoever this individual is leave? What is his usefulness? What is his value to you and your work? Let another take his place. So I anointed this guy. I traveled to America. Few weeks, very early in the morning, about five in the morning, American time, my phone rang and I picked it up. He said, Papa. I said, Kofi, what is it? He said, You won't believe this. And I said, What? He said, I was in my office with my colleagues and we had a scream at the other side. So we rushed out there. When we went, there was this, this guy was lying on the ground and he was foaming and he died. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you something. Some years ago, I was targeted for assassination. Three men. And the Holy Spirit said at Tuesday night, it was Wednesday night. Tuesday night, the Holy Spirit said, they are coming for you tomorrow night at 8.30. Resist the arrest. Before 8.30, a man came and said, 
Three of us have been assigned to pick you up, to assassinate you. I don't want to do it, but I'm under authority. I said, don't worry. I'm not dying. I'll outlive all of you. 8.30, they came. I went out. I won't mention the name. Some of them are still alive. And I went to meet them. There were three men armed with walkie-talkies. And I said, what do you want? And they said, we have an order to bring you. And I said, who gave you the order? They said, we can't tell you, but you must come with us. And I said, let me tell you something. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I will not die today or tomorrow. I will outlive every one of you. And I, I, I said, I resist this arrest. I resist it. They went on the Motorola and they spoke to somebody and said, okay, report tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock without fail at the annex, somewhere at 37 area there. And I said, I'll be there. That night, I called some of my guys and said, let's pray. We went into prayer. Then the Spirit of God said, when you get there tomorrow morning, before the panel begin to interview you, request to pray. So I got there at 10. And I said, can I pray? And they look at each other and say, yes, pray. And then Psalm 109 came upon me. And I said, I said, Lord, set Satan on their right hand. And when they are judged, let them be guilty. And let their children be fatherless. And let their name be removed from the book of life. And I began to enforce Psalm 109 without having all the understanding of Psalm 109. It's a very dangerous psalm. Don't use it unless you are in trouble. Anyway, after they told me, go sit down. They looked at one another and said, this is not fair. We are doing our job. They said, go sit down there. I'll tell you something. After four hours, they said, go home. We'll call you back. And I'll tell you something. Three of the people who came for me, two are dead. The third one that came to talk to me, he's still alive. He's in my church. Lift up your right hand. Say, anyone that seeks my life. Anyone that seeks my life. Anyone that desires my hurt. Anyone that desires my hurt. And anyone. Anyone. That device. That device. My demise. My demise. Or, devise, and, or, or the demise of my seed. Or the demise of my seed. Let them become a scapegoat. Let them become a scapegoat. Let them go in my place. Let them go in my place. Let them become as chaff before the wind. Let them become as chaff before Let the, the wind. angel of the Lord trouble them. The angel of the Lord trouble Let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Yea. Yeah. Let their oracles. Let their oracles. And their diviners. And their diviners. Mislead and misguide them. Mislead and misguide them. Let them go into obscurity. Let them go into obscurity. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Let them go into a strange land. Let, them go into a strange land. Let their defenses depart from them. Yeah. Let them become defenseless. Let them become defenseless. And let there be no one to help them. Let there be no one to help or their children. Or their children. Say, I enforce it. I enforce it. As I put my hands together right now, I enforce it. We enforce it. We enforce it. We enforce the word of the Lord. We enforce the word of the Lord. And the demonic and satanic program, and the demonic and satanic expectation, we command them, let them pass fire, let them pass fire by divine authority, by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Say, I intercept. I intercept. Any interference, any interference and resistance, and resistance to my deliverance, to my deliverance, to my manifestation, to my manifestation, to my breakthrough, to my breakthrough. Say I intercept, I intercept, I arrest, I arrest every interference, every interference, imagination, imagination, manipulation, manipulation and resistance, and resistance to my deliverance, to my deliverance, to the deliverance of my children, to the deliverance of my children, to my financial breakthroughs, to my financial. I command, I command unseen barriers, unseen barriers invisible, walls, invisible walls fall, 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 fall come down, down come down, down, down break, 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 break. Put your hands together. Come on, break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let the walls break. 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 Break.
Mosimo, Hata, Hata, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, somebody pray, put it together, clap your hands and force it, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, in the name of Jesus, let it fall, break, let it fall, break, let it fall, break, let it fall, in the name of Jesus, break, break. Whatever you are, let it break. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. On every side. Breakthroughs. Now. Hear me. Two things I must do right now. There are certain individuals here. You had some growth. And cysts. And lambs. For some of you, it has disappeared. For others, it's shrinking. Amen. Examine yourself right now. You see what I'm telling you. Examine yourself. And if something has disappeared or is shrinking, as you examine yourself, just come and touch the altar. Just come and touch the altar. I will not embarrass you. Just come touch the altar and go back to your seat. If something has disappeared or something is shrinking, just come touch the altar and go back to your seat. Now, just come, just come, just touch the altar. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm, going to, I'm not going to ask you to give a testimony. Just come touch the altar and go back to your seat and it will not come back. But if you don't testify, it will come back. So just come touch the altar, go back to your seat. If it's not fully gone, it will disappear fully. So come touch the altar, go back to your seat. If it, is, if it has shrunk or is shrinking, just come touch the altar, go back to your seat. Keep your healing, keep your healing. It's shrinking, it's disappearing. Amen. It has disappeared. Just come and touch the altar and go back to your seat. God will acknowledge that. God will acknowledge that. Are you hearing me, somebody? I don't want to be giving test. You can do the testimony some other day, some other time. Pastor, make sure another time you call for testimonies, okay? Of lumps and tumors, uh, shrinking, those that have disappeared. It happens all the time, you know? Yeah. 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 There is somebody here. There's somebody here. You are dealing with spasms of your spine. The spine. The spine. Your lower back. The spine. You can't bend like this. You are dealing with strong spasms and pain. And sometimes it literally incapacitates you. I want you right now to examine yourself. Ben, do what you couldn't do right now. It's lifted. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And if you examine yourself and it's gone, just come and touch the altar. Just come, touch the altar and go back to your seat in the name of Jesus. Just come and touch the altar and go back to your seat. Put your hands together. Put your hands together for whoever it is. It is done. Yeah. Just come and touch the altar and go back to your seat. That's all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him praise, somebody. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Just thank him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. There is a lady here. You've been bleeding, bleeding heavily. You've been bleeding heavily. For some time now, it doesn't make sense. And it's something that happens with your menstrual cycle. You breathe heavily and you start having all kinds of crumbs and you are in pain. Right now, the cycle is broken in the name of Amen. Jesus. It is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just come and touch the altar and go back to your seat. Come touch the altar, go back to your seat. You don't have to tell anybody anything. Just touch the altar and go back to your seat in the name of Jesus. Somebody put your hands together. Just give God praise. Just give God praise. Give God the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. It's broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, break, 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 break. Break, 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 break. Break in the name of Jesus. Break. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, lastly, lastly. There, there are some individuals here. Eh? There are some individuals here. When you sleep in the night, you see yourself I'm going to call categories of three people. You see somebody coming to have sex with you in your dreams. And when you wake up, you see signs of it. 
Number two, there's another group of people here. When you dream, you find yourself with the dead, people who are dead. Talu tawahasid, lefalaka wasatum, filum wakahasan, ilimalum wukusun. We dismiss the sentence of death. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Katum Balasa, Jesus. we overrides yes, every dead wish. Amen. Those individuals come and touch the altar. Makatuns. Another group, another group. When you dream, you, you see yourself always fighting snakes, snakes, snakes. Come touch the altar. Everybody start praying because something will happen to some of them right now. Put your hands together as they come and touch the altar. Something will begin to happen to them right now. Come forward. Come here. Come. Come forward. Start touching them. Start touching them. Come. Come. Lift up your hands. 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 Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Don't go. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Touch. Touch, 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 Jesus, touch, Jesus, touch, 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 Jesus, touch, touch, you touch, 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 One more time, you do mighty things, you do God. You do glorious things, oh God. You are a faithful God. You do mighty things. You do glorious things, God. Say, I stand amazed in your presence. Say, stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do, God. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence.
verständigen. 